Hi, guys, come on in. Thank you. Thank you so much for agreeing to meet with me, especially on such short, well, no, notice. <laughs> Look, um, I know that well, some of you are close with Nina, so I just wanted to reach out first. I get it. I know everyone is a little blindsided by my presence here. And I understand, I mean, if someone would have told me even 24 hours ago that I would be in this position, I would have said they were crazy. But here I am, and here you all are. So why don't we just focus on the business at hand, right? I wanted to do this in person, you know, leave the lawyers out of it, at least for now. <sighs> all right, well, Deception's advertising contract with Crimson is up for renewal, and I am eager to maintain this relationship and hopefully see how it can evolve. Does anyone have any questions? So, so many. I don't even know where to start. Okay, look guys, I, I acknowledge that Nina played a crucial part in forming the partnership between Deception and Crimson. One that has been profitable for both parties. So if you think that I'm gonna come in here and change everything solely to do things different than Nina, that is not gonna happen. In fact, the only changes I wanna make are the ones that maximize both our successes. Carly, I am so sorry. I've been trying to think of a way to ask this that doesn't sound snarky. Who are you in the room with? <laughs> Sasha, you can say anything you want to me. Okay, it's just that running the metric cord and the diner require a very different skill set than running a magazine. We want to know why we can trust you to represent Deception in, in this very new, untested, very sudden version of Crimson. That's fair. Maxie, you might know this, but I doubt that Brooklyn and Sasha do. Back in the 90s, I was an original part owner of the Deception Fragrance Company. Really? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I have a history with Deception and an affection for it. That's why I want to do right by it and you. We're listening. Okay, well, we are in the process of closing out our April issue, and as you know, it's one of the biggest issues of the year. Second only to September. That's right. How about I increase Deception's page count at a favorable rate? How favorable are we talking? Don't sign anything. Oh wait, I'm the only one that can do that. <laughs> Thank God. So, what did I miss, anything good? Like the part where Carly explains how a rank amateur can avoid running crimson right into the ground. I, for one, am dying to know how an innkeeper is qualified to run a fashion magazine and how to explain fashion to you. I guess I'll look it up online. As I was explaining to your partners, junior partners, I have run several businesses, Tracy, learning from the ground up, and nothing is gonna change with Crimson except the name on the masthead. So we're swapping out the current Mrs. Corinthos for the previous gun mall, which just doesn't sound like progress to me. Oh, come on, grandmother, at least hear what she's to say. Carly is offering Deception substantial concessions. Exactly at a time we could use them. We're pushing a new fragrance and we're launching our men's line with Cody as our spokesmodel. So all of you are perfectly content to risk Deception's brand on a dilettante. Oh my God, Nina was a baby stealing lunatic when she took over the magazine and it was only given to her so she could run it into the ground. Wow, I really wanna object with that characterization, but that's exactly what happened. And look at it now. Julian took a gamble on Nina and it paid off, not in the way he wanted it to. Drew is taking a much smaller gamble on me, and I'm just asking you to do the same. A small gamble. I think it's an opportunity that you can't afford to miss. <laughs>